over much of England during the early part of the 17th century, tyrant landowners were engaged in enclosing the common land that the peasants depended on for their very livelihoods. In vain, the village folk fought for what was theirs. Such a struggle for survival took place around the village of Stoke Poges in Buckinghamshire. Thomas Gray, the poet, sitting in the churchyard a century later, remembered those forgotten heroes of the common folk in some of the finest lines in English literature. Although long dead himself, Gray's poem remains a memorial to the forefathers of the hamlet. The curfew bell still tolls. The churchyard remains the same, an inspiration to many a country parson, where the present and past are joined in celebration of that which has no present, has no past of everything which we may call timeless. Thomas Gray, 1716 to 1771. And so it is when our friends die. That part of us which lived with them dies also. Death, like a tolling bell, summons its wayward parishioners all. But enough. I send to you with this my poem. It is entitled, The Elegy Written in a Country Churchyard. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight, and all the air a solemn stillness holds, save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. save that from yonder ivy-mantled tower the moping owl does to the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms, that yew tree's shade, where heaves the turf in many a mouldering heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid, the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep. The breezy call of incense breathing morn, the swallow twittering from the straw built shed, the cock's shrill clarion or the echoing horn, no more shall rouse them from their lowly bed.
for them no more the blazing hearth shall burn, or busy housewife ply her evening care. No children run to lisp their sire's return, or climb his knees the envied kiss to share. Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield, their furrow oft the stubborn glebe has broke. How jocund did they drive their team afield, how bowed the woods beneath their sturdy stroke. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys and destiny obscure, nor grandeur here with a disdainful smile, the short and simple annals of the poor. The boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty all that wealth e'er gave, await alike the inevitable hour. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er their tomb no trophies raise, where through the long-drawn aisle and fretted vault the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honor's voice provoke the silent dust or flattery soothe the dull, cold ear of death? Perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire hands that the rod of empire might have swayed, or waked to ecstasy the living lyre. But knowledge to their eyes, her ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did ne'er unroll. Chill penury repressed their noble rage, and froze the genial current of the soul. Full many a gem of purest ray serene the dark, unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Some village Hamden that with dauntless breast the little tyrant of his fields withstood. Some mute, inglorious Milton here may rest. Some Cromwell, guiltless of his country's blood. The applause of listening senates to command, the threats of pain and ruin to despise, to scatter plenty over a smiling land and read their history in the nation's eyes. Their lot forbade nor circumscribed alone their growing virtues, but their crimes confined, forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne and shut the gates of mercy on mankind. The struggling pangs of conscious truth to hide, to quench the blushes of ingenuous shame, or heap the shrine of luxury and pride with incense kindled at the muse's flame. Far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife, their sober wishes never learned to stray. Along the cool, sequestered vale of life, they kept the noiseless tenor of their way. Yet even these bones, from insult to protect, 
some frail memorial still erected nigh, with uncouth rhymes and shapeless sculpture decked, implores the passing tribute of a sigh. Their name, their years, spelt by the unlettered muse, the place of fame and elegy supply, and many a holy text around she strews, that teach the rustic moralist to die. Corruptionem, absorbta est mors in victoria. Ubi est mors? For who, to dumb forgetfulness a prey, this pleasing, anxious being e'er resigned, left the warm precincts of the cheerful day, nor cast one longing, lingering look behind. On some fond breast, the parting soul relies. Some pious drops the closing eye requires. E'en from the tomb, the voice of nature cries, even in our ashes live their wonted fires. For thee, who, mindful of the unhonored dead, dost in these lines their artless tale relate, if chance, by lonely contemplation led, some kindred spirit shall inquire thy fate, haply some hoary-headed swain may say, oft have we seen him at the peep of dawn, brushing with hasty steps the dews away, to meet the sun upon the upland lawn. There at the foot of yonder nodding beech, that wreathes its old fantastic roots so high, his listless length at noontide would he stretch, and pour upon the brook that babbles by. Him have we seen the greenwood side along, while o'er the heath we hide our labor done, oft as the woodlark piped her farewell song, with wistful eyes pursue the setting sun. Hard by yon wood, now smiling as in scorn, muttering his wayward fancies he would rove, now drooping, woeful wan, like one forlorn, or crazed with care, or crossed in hopeless love. One morn, I missed him on the customed hill, 
along the heath and near his favorite tree. Another came, nor yet beside the rill, nor up the lawn, nor at the wood was he. The next, with dirges due in sad array, slow through the churchway path we saw him borne. Approach and read, for thou canst read, the lay graved on the stone beneath yon aged thorn. Here rests his head upon the lap of earth, a youth to fortune and to fame unknown. Fair science frowned not on his humble birth, and melancholy marked him for her own. Large was his bounty, and his soul sincere. Heaven did a recompense as largely send. He gave to misery all he had, a tear. He gained from heaven, t'was all he wished, a friend. No father seek his merits to disclose, or draw his frailties from their dread abode. There they alike in trembling hope repose. The bosom of his father and his God 